boys and girls. I'm really glad to see you again this week. It's Halloween week. It's also really, really cold outside. Have you been outside? Raise your hand if you've had to wear mittens or gloves. Raise your hand if you've had to wear a warm hat to keep your head warm. Or raise your hand if you've had to wear a scarf around your neck. I know that not everywhere is doing trick-or-treating this year. Some places are, but some places aren't. But for whatever reason, if you're going out on Halloween, I hope that you have warm things to wear over a costume or over your regular clothes. And even if you're not going out this year, we can still have some Halloween fun, can't we? I've got some nice Halloween stories and songs. I've got one that even involves a craft you can do this week. And I'm really looking forward to sharing all of it with you. So shall we get started? <laughs> Clap your hands if you love stories. Clap your hands, I know you do. I'm so glad that we could be together. Glad to share a story time with you. This story is called The Little Witch's House. And it's got part of it that I'm gonna need this piece of paper to show you. Get ready. Maybe later you can try it yourself. So once upon a time, there was a little witch, a fairy little witch. And she was walking through the woods, feeling the dry leaves crunch under her feet and feeling the chill wind against her face. When all of a sudden, an orange piece of paper came fluttering through the trees and landed at her feet. And she looked at that paper and picked it up and said, I can make a perfect little house for myself with this orange paper. So she folded it in half so it would be just the right size. And she said, it needs to have just the right kind of roof so that when it snows, the snows will fall off the corners. One side, and the other. And she said, I need a door to get into my house. She always wore a pointed hat, so it had to be a specially shaped kind of door. It had a tall pointed side and then a shorter side over here. So that was her door. And then she said, I'll need some windows to let in the light. So over on the other side, she cut herself a very nice rectangular window to see out. And she said, this is going to be the perfect house for me to live in this winter. And she was just about to go inside when all of a sudden she heard a voice behind her coming down the trail and it was crying. And she turned around to see who was crying and it was a little tiny ghost. And she said, little ghost, why are you so sad? And the ghost said, I am all by myself and I don't have any warm house to live in this winter. The little witch said, I have a big house just for me. And if you want, you can share it with me. I'd be happy to have someone share my house. And the little ghost dried his tears and said, that would be wonderful. Thank you very much. And the witch said, not a problem at all. Of course, you'll need your own little door to get in. And so she cut that little ghost, a little door right next to her door so that he could get in too. And they were very, very happy inside their house all winter. In fact, do you want to see inside their house? Do you want to see what it looked like inside? What did I make? What is that? <laughs> we made a jack-o'-lantern, didn't we? <laughs> the end. 
Can you make a ghost with your hand? Don't make a scary one. I don't want to be scared. This is my little ghost. He's flying around in the air. We're going to use him as the start of our rhyme today. One little ghost flew down the street. I wonder, he said, what I will meet. One hairy spider. Two black cats. Three wild witches with pointed hats. Four old owls in a hollow tree. And five brother bats to fly with me. Make your bats fly around. Let's do that one more time, okay? One little ghost flew down the street. I wonder, he said, what I will meet. One hairy spider. Two black cats, like their whiskers. Three wild witches in pointed hats. Four old owls in a hollow tree. And five brother bats to fly with me. <laughs> Do you like bats? Have you ever seen them? Sometimes if you go out late in the evening when it's just starting to turn into night, and the sky is almost all the way dark, but it's not quite there. And you can just make out them swooping around in the sky, eating bugs and diving and climbing in the air. Some people think they're kind of scary, but I think they're neat. There's no other animal quite like them. They can tell when things are in front of them without even seeing them. They make noises and the noises bounce back and they can hear them and know how far they are away from running into something. I think that's pretty interesting. But they're always out at night and not during the day. And so I have a story here called The Little Bat Who Didn't Want to Go to Bed. <laughs> Come, said Mama Bat, flying toward her home in the cave. It's time that you children went to bed. The sky is getting bright, and I can see the fleecy clouds are starting to turn red at the bottom because the sun is looking at them. The little bats flitted after her, and Papa Bat came behind them. They'd been flying through the forest all night, eating and playing and diving in and out of the tangled branches without ever running into any of them. But now they were on their way back home to sleep. And one of the little bats was not very happy about that. He was hanging behind the line and his father kept having to tell him, fly faster, fly faster. But he really, really didn't want to. He was thinking about how interesting it would be to see that forest in the daytime. He'd never seen it during the day. He'd never seen the sunrise and he wondered what that would look like. He'd never seen or heard any of the birds that sing during the daytime or any of the animals that wake up in the morning instead of in the evening. They thought it was pretty mean to make all the poor little bats go to bed the minute the stars start to fade out. He didn't believe his father and mother when they said that he wouldn't have a good time during the day. He thought that they were just lying to him to keep him from having fun. And so he coaxed and he pleaded and he said, please, 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 do I have to go to bed? Can't I just stay up a little bit into the day? <sighs> the father said, no, there's never a better place to sleep than in our cave and never a better time than the day. This time, as he entered the cave, Mama Pat said to him, come on, climb up into that crevice and lock your feet in place so that you can get to sleep. The little bat answered, I'm not going to sleep. And the father sighed a big sigh and he said, do we have to do this again? And the mother said, it's time. It's time for all little bats to go to bed. And the little bat said, no, I'm not. Mama bat said, maybe he didn't eat enough for dinner and that's why he's grouchy. Or maybe he didn't sleep very well last night. And little bat flapped his wings in frustration and he said, no, I ate just the right amount and I'm not tired and I'm going to stay up. I think you ought to let me have some fun for just once. 
Papa and Mama looked at each other. And Papa said, well, I can't make you go to sleep. You'll do what you'll do, I suppose. Fly away if you want to and let the rest of the family sleep. And so the little bat flew out of the cave. His mama looked after him as he went and said, I think it's right that we let him figure it out on his own, but I wish that little bats didn't have to learn the hard way how much trouble they can get into by being disobedient. But the little bat didn't hear. He was flying away feeling very brave. He guessed that he knew how to take care of himself, and so he started dipping and dashing and flitting and flapping between the branches as the sky got brighter and brighter. But as that sky got brighter and brighter, it started to make his eyes hurt. He'd never been awake during the daytime before, and he didn't really know how much brighter the sun would be than the moon was. And then the songbirds started to wake up and sing to the sun. And the bat thought that was interesting, but he thought they were also maybe singing a bit too loudly. It was hurting his ears. The nighttime birds didn't sing that loudly to the moon. He didn't see what was so special about the sun that they needed to scream at it. Then something went scampering over the grass. He said, I think that might be a rabbit. The owl told me that that's how they run. I wish I could see. My eyes just won't focus right now. I don't know what's the matter with them. They're all blurry. And just then, a sunbeam came slanting through the branches and hit his fur. And he said, ow! Because sunbeams are way, way more warm than moonbeams ever are. And he felt way too hot and uncomfortable and it was too bright and hurting his eyes. And maybe he was tired and maybe he just didn't know what was wrong. And suddenly he was falling down, 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 out of the sky, head over heels, over head over heels, landing in the grass with a thump. Well, a crow saw him fall and cried loudly, come, come, come. And all the birds, the orioles and the robins and the woodpeckers and the goldfinches all gathered on the grass around the bat. And then old father groundhog showed up and everyone looked to him to see what should they, what they should do. And the groundhog said, what is the cause of all this commotion? And the biggest rabbit who happened to be there said, we found such a strange bird, sir. Just look at him tumbling on the grass. And a woodpecker said, bird, that's no bird. Look at his ears and he doesn't even have a beak. Well, he flies, said the rabbit, because I saw him, so he must be a bird, <laughs> said a chipmunk. So does my cousin, the flying squirrel, but he's not a bird. And the Oriole said, he doesn't even have any feathers. The father rabbit said, I'm not saying that my son is right, but this creature has wings. And he poked at the bat, which made him flutter wildly for a minute. And one of the other birds said, but what kind of wings? A pair of skinny things that grow all the way down to his legs and have hooks on the ends. An old father groundhog said, he must be a very stupid creature, no matter what he is. He doesn't seem to walk or talk or fly very well. He must come from a very common family. For my part, I'm not interested any longer. And he walked away. And after the groundhog left, all the other animals and birds decided they weren't interested either. And they made their way away. So finally, the little bat was left all by himself on the ground. He fluttered and fluttered until finally he was able to fly up to a low branch and hung there to wait for the night. He said, oh dear, I wonder how long the day is. I'm hot and I'm sleepy and my eyes don't work and none of the people in the forest during the day are very nice at all. They won't talk to me and they don't think my wings look pretty. I wish I could see what they look like. I bet they're ugly. He was very unhappy. And then he thought about his mama and papa. And it isn't very often that little bats like him like to say that they were wrong about something, but he knew that he was wrong. And he said to himself, 
if I get back to my cave safely, I'm always going to listen to my mama and papa from now on. He did make it back that next night. And I'd like to say that he always listened to his mama and papa after that. And maybe he did. I can't say for certain. Now we're going to sing a very old song. It's called the Jack-O-Lantern song. And I want you to go see if you can find something that you can swirl around. It doesn't have to be scarves like these. These are just fancy. If you've got an old blanket or a new blanket, if you've got a washcloth or a towel or anything that you want to wave around, a pillowcase, a sheet, anything that you can use to swirl and whirl in the air, because there's going to be a lot of that in this song. Over and over, I'm going to be saying, woo, 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 like the wind. You'll start to be able to tell when that's coming. And if you want to say woo, woo, woo with me too while you're spinning, that would be awesome. I think we're all going to like this song. We ready? <laughs> get up, get up. We're all going to dance and have some fun. <laughs> up on one wild and windy night, woo, woo, woo. We jacks our lanterns all did light the wind it surely knew for whistle and whistle and whisk now list woo 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 whirling and twirling with turn and twist the wind is softly blue pretty good it was the creepiest scariest night woo 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 we held our breath then lost it quite the wind it surely knew for whistle and whistle and whisk now list woo Whirling and twirling with turn and twist, the wind did loudly blew. <laughs> it rose in all its mane and might. Woo, woo, woo. It blew out every single light, the wind it surely knew. All whistle and whistle and whist now list. Woo, woo, woo. Whirling and twirling with turn and twist, that wind it laughed. Ho, ho. <laughs> well, that's it for another week. And another week that. We didn't get to see each other maybe face to face or in person, but I'm still, as always, really glad to get to see you this way. If you ever want to say hi back, you can always come by our Facebook page and post us a little message or a little picture. I can tell you that all of the librarians in the youth services room, in the children's room, we miss you guys a whole lot. It's lonely being a librarian without any boys and girls around. But we'll think about that another time. For now, I want to see everyone get a really big stretch, okay? Ooh. And reach for the ceiling and touch the floor. Stand up again. Let's do some more. Touch your head. And now your knees up to your shoulders like this, you see. Reach for the ceiling and touch the floor. That's all there is. There isn't any more. Bye-bye. See you next week. Bye.